Joining us by Skype is the director of Wakao, uh, June Robles Lana. Please welcome them. Uh, hi, everyone. I, I wanted to start by just asking a little bit about the background of the film and, uh, and sort of what inspired you to tell this story about, uh, about this very particular older man sort of uh, uh, rediscovering life. Um, in 2007, my mentor died, Rene Villanueva. He's a, he, he was a celebrated playwright and children's book author in the Philippines. And when he died, my greatest fear was forgetting him. And I decided to embark on this writing project um, to, to honor my mentor. Uh, but when I started the screenplay, I didn't have a story to begin with. But what I had was this uh, fictional character heavily based on Rene, my mentor a man who was always at odds with himself, who was harsh and generous at the same time. It was a character so interesting to me that I was able to build a story around it, and it became a story about growing old, about missed opportunities, about how desire is inextricable from our lives. And I've also always wanted to do a dog movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but not in the vein of, of Marley and me. Um, I was looking for a tone uh, treatment that was uh, quieter and, and subdued, and I felt it was an interesting juxtaposition, this old man who was just waiting for his death, and this dog who was dying, but at the same, same time still maintained this uh, a, a sense of abandon and hunger for life. Yeah, I would say it's more Umberto D than Marley and me, uh -huh. thankfully. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the performance of Eddie Garcia is quite spectacular, and, and uh, maybe you can actually, for people who don't know Eddie Garcia and his hundreds of credits in the Philippine film industry, you can talk a little bit about who he is and, and why you decided to cast him in this part. Eddie Garcia is a multi-awarded actor and, and uh, director in the Philippines. Uh, he is like the Clint Eastwood of the Philippines. Um, in, he started his career in the 1950s as a, as a character actor and then he reinvented himself as a film director and then he reinvented himself again in the, in, when he was in his 50s as, a, as an action star. Um, and um, now he acts in, in, in soap operas uh, and he, he remains a huge star and he's very, very straight. <laughs> And, and was he immediately interested to play this part? Did you have to convince him to play it? Um, um, I think he was really my first and only choice to, to play the role of Rene. Um, and uh, because I've worked with him, uh, I've, I've known Eddie Garcia for, for years. I've written parts for him in, in different TV shows. I've even directed him in a soap opera. So it was really quite easy for me to approach him and offer him the role. All, all I did was really uh, send him a copy of the script. And uh, a few days later, he called to say that he loved the script, he loved the story, he, he liked his role, and he immediately signed on to the project without even asking me how much he was getting for it. And uh, talk about casting your other star, Princess, who plays Waco. I think it's a... I think the dog from The Artist just got nervous that there's a competition <laughs> in town. Um, well, um, there was another dog who was supposed to play uh, the role of Wakao, but a month before the shoot, the owner just backed out of the project and we were left with, with no dog. And uh, I almost uh, shelved the project um, out of desperation because we didn't have enough time to hold another edition. I just decided to try my luck on YouTube. And that's where I found Princess. Uh, his, uh, her owner uh, has this uh, uh, dog cam. And, um, we, and uh, we, the, the dog camp specializes in, in training Aspins or, or Philippine Mots. And that same day I went to the dog camp and uh, I met the princess for the first time. Uh, she's a two-year-old half golden retriever. And, um, and she also happens to be a highly trained bomb sniffing dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn, I sense there's a fascinating anecdote behind every question. I'm gonna turn it over to the uh, audience now. Yes, here in the front. Two questions. Oh, wait for the microphone. Yes. So, Waco is a successful bomb-sniffing dog. Do you have any additional stories that might be able to be made into a film based on her career experience? And 
Uh, how is the film, uh, given the, you know, all these different uh, sides of the gay community there, how is the film accepted in the uh, Philippines? Uh, well, to answer your question um, about, about Princess, uh, she's actually a star now in the Philippines. She has her own soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, seriously. <laughs> And, uh, well, um, the Wacko lasted uh, two weeks in the box office. Uh, we released it last uh, uh, October, and uh, no, rather, rather last September, and it, it lasted two weeks in the box office, uh, competing against uh, really big commercial releases. It made a little over four million pesos, which is roughly the, the, the entire cost of, of making the film, so we made break even. Um, at the cinema, it was the uh, it was a box it was a box office here, but the cinema, but then it's a it's a different crowd. It's um, made mostly of, of students. Other questions? Oh, I'll, 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 I would like to. Uh, yeah, uh, Jim. There's uh, you know Filipino films that have had gay themes. Uh, which are very integrated into the neighborhood and the community. They're not separate fantasy stories, such as Maximo Flowers. And I just wondered, also involving intergenerational people uh, in a neighborhood, the gay characters are very integrated into their neighborhood. Could you talk a little bit about how, in a basically Catholic Muslim country, this kind of acceptance of the homosexual inside the community uh, working people's community? Um, you know, despite the fact that the Philippines is a predominantly Catholic country, and despite the fact that we were uh, raised early on believing, we were made to believe and uh, that uh, being gay is a sin, uh, Philippines in general are, are very gay friendly and open minded. Um, and uh, we have really no problem about uh, films like this. Uh, we, I mean, um, Gay films in, 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 in general are, are released every month. In, we have new uh, gay films being released every month in, in the Philippines, so it's, it's, it's not really a problem. Uh, we don't have issues uh, about, uh, about uh, films like this. But do, do, does the film cross over? Is, does the film cross over into a general audience, or does it remain in a film like yours? No, it really depends on, on, on uh, um, us as an independent filmmaker. We have uh, we we still encounter problems trying to just to trying to distribute our, our films, um, and until we get the government support, I mean, uh, films like this uh, will get I think wider acceptance because right now it's the big studios that control the cinemas. So, for example, with Waka, we were only able to to release it to a limited number of, of film of cinemas in, in, in Manila, uh, only about uh, 12 to, to 15 cinemas. And there are over uh, 100 cinemas in, in Manila. Can you, can you talk a little bit about um, the visual style of the film and maybe what some of your influences were there? Because I think when we looked at the film for the festival, one of the things that was so striking was the, the very uh, sort of uh, carefully composed and very beautifully lit images and I think you know when one thinks about films from the Philippines even some of the great masterpieces of Lino Broca look like films that were made very quickly in very uh, sort of frantic circumstances and, and they don't have this kind of polished very uh, painterly sort of aesthetic to them. Um, well we, we, we made the movie in, in 10 straight days. We had no choice. Uh, because of budget constraints and because of, um, of conflict and schedules of the actors. But we spent a great deal of time in pre-production deciding on the smallest detail. Uh, when I decided to, to make the film, it, it, it was clear to me from the very beginning that in order 